G'day. And thanks for joining me on this podcast today. We're here today with a legend in Australian travel and tourism, James Bailey of Bailey Lodges. James and I met almost 25 years ago uh, up in North Queensland, and we've been lifelong friends since then. I've gone through lots of things together and seen him seen Bailey Lodges emerge as being the leading provider of luxury travel in Australia. What I'd like to ask is, uh, James, a couple of questions, mate, while you're there. You're in Australia right now, uh, having a cup of coffee, it looks like. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, I've got my uh, coffee here from uh, the local cafe just down the road here in Avalon on the northern beaches of Sydney. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. A place to be isolated. So what are the current travel restrictions and lockdown policies the region are experiencing in Australia? Well, uh, first of all, uh, g'day back, and uh, it's great to, to be with you all, and uh, great to be, you know, part of the uh, Swain, the Swain team. And uh, I think just to flag there that Bailey Lodges and Swain have been fantastic partners for such a long time now. And as uh, Ian just said, our history goes right, right back to uh, I think our P and O days together in uh, North Queensland. So um, that's you know, it's a it's a long time, but we're, we're getting younger as the years go by. It's amazing, but, um, how, it's amazing how that's happening. It is, it is. The uh, shame the Zoom technology doesn't have the, uh, you know, that special sort of uh, anti-aging uh, mask over the top. I'm sure someone will come up with it. Actually, that's possibly a good idea. Um, now, back to uh, the reality of the times. They're uh, crazy times. and uh, but, but here in Australia, um, I think, things are perhaps more relaxed and certainly other parts of the world. We've been very lucky so far with, uh, I think the word is flattening the curve. And uh, whilst we are officially in lockdown, life in many parts of Australia is going on, I wouldn't say totally normally, but uh, certainly um, with not the same restrictions as other parts of the world. And I think that has a little bit to do with the Australian psyche. Um, in that, you know, we sort of roll with the punches in, in, in some way. So here where we live in Avalon, uh, the Northern Beaches, my kids currently on extended school holidays, they're in the surf right at the moment. Uh, that's a totally allowable activity. You can surf all day if you want. So they're out there. You can't hang out in the beaches, can't hang out with your mates, but you can certainly be out there exercising. So just coming into here, the office this morning, um, you know, people are out uh, running, they're, um, you know, they're out on the water and generally uh, making the most, I suppose, of what is a terrible time around the world, but, but at the same time making the most of the incredible Australian environment uh, where we are here. You're in a beautiful part of the country because I, I spent 10 years of my life in Sydney, not too far away from Avalon. And I know the beaches and the surf you're talking about, and it's just a tremendous place. And certainly the Aussie attitude is very relaxed and it hasn't changed that ever since um, I've left. And it's just been, it's always great to come home. But what's the, um, been the immediate impact on your businesses? What measures are you taking to ensure you're able to endure for a prolonged period of impact? Well, um, it's been week by week. I mean, things uh, really snuck up on us. Um, in fact, I was in Tasmania doing an incredible walk, uh, the Three Capes walk in Tasmania uh, a month ago today. And at that point, everything that all of our lodges and most of Australia was, was still very much over for, open for business. Although, of course, there were you know, incoming flight restrictions since then. The, we now have the much more limited flights. We have, you know, a mandatory 14 day quarantine coming into Australia and, you know, air travel has pretty much ceased throughout, throughout the country. So during that time, all of our properties have one by one closed. Um, so Lord Howe Island, they sort of uh, classified as a quarantine zone. Uh, then the same happened out at Uluru in the Northern Territory. Um, and most recently, we've had to close um, Silky Oaks Lodge uh, up in the up in the Daintree. So all the properties have now have now closed. Um, there's a skeleton staff at every one of at every one of the lodges. Um, we're taking the opportunity to do some uh, maintenance at each of the properties. And here in our Sydney office, which is the I suppose the hub um, the hub of the business we have about a, a 60% of our team and most people are coming in sort of three, four days a week. Uh, some are working from home. So 
we're in a good position. The Australian government um, has been just more recently, they've announced some job support packages, so uh, which flow right through to the employees. So there's what's called job keeper programs. So the whole aim is to actually keep people in jobs and not out in the unemployment in the unemployment line. So that's really positive. I think that Australia has, by flattening the curve and keeping people out of hospital, I think we're really well positioned to come back very quickly. Um, and when that is, you know, is anybody's guess at the moment. But I think one of the key things to, to think about is that for the, when travel does really start up and especially from, you know, one of our favourite desti um, favorite incoming destinations from the US is that Australia has always been considered a safe destination and it's going to be even perceived as more safer. That's probably not the right, the right English, but it works in Australian. Um, it's going to be much safer in the future compared to many other destinations because we've had such a low impact and we've managed to, um, you know, flatten that curve. And, you know, we have such wide open spaces and that sets us apart from so many of the much more densely populated areas of the world. Yeah, Australia's got a lot going for us, that's for sure. And it definitely is one of the safest destinations in the world and we'll continue to do that. But everyone across the industry has been impacted by this health crisis and you struggle to find an area of the industry that's really not. With each business taking their own approaches to policy adjustments, organisational adjustments and planning for potentially long-term impact, while of course hoping for the best, what would you like to see everyone in the industry doing better to support one another throughout this period? Well, I think um, one of the key things is continuing to tell stories and sell the, you know, talk about the amazing destinations, talk about um, whether it be the incredible food served by, you know, that amazing restaurant in that, in, you know, incredible local sort of winery or whether it's the amazing dive site on the Great Barrier Reef or whether it's that incredible hike I was just talking about in Tasmania. There's so many stories and now's the time. There's people out there, they're armchair travellers now. I mean, people are so connected. It, many people have got a lot of time on their hands and I think we could be all telling so many more stories and really harnessing all of those social media channels, other media channels and actually getting the message out. So for when travel does come back, people have already made plans. They know what their new bucket list is. And I think that's something that we could, could all do better. Um, and uh, at the same time, it's, it's really positive And I think it's fantastic for everyone to be, you know, telling those positive stories. There's a lot of stories that we could tell, but probably now is not the time. But <laughs> well, one of the um, one of the best weekends we've had, Linda and I, when you invited us down to Kangaroo Island to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Southern Ocean Lodge, and we just had a tremendous weekend from the time we arrived to the time we left, and that was an, a great experience. But tell us, have you seen any positive news stories in your local community down there in Australia that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, well, I think um, uh, Kangaroo Island is a is a an area where there's you know positive news stories all the time, and I think um, we're just over twelve years now from when. So that was two years ago. You came down for the you know the yeah. ten year party for for Southern Ocean. I mean, sadly, um, the bushfires you know raged through um, Kangaroo Island uh, earlier this year. Um, God, who would have thought? What a year! Let's uh, trade in twenty twenty for another one. Um, and uh, sadly, of course, Southern Ocean Lodge is uh, was you know significantly damaged. We're working now on um, bringing that property back, working with insurers, working with um, designers, um, everything there. And I think some as part of that process, we've seen a couple of really interesting stories. One is the support that we have in South Australia, and especially from the South Australian government, um, in Kangaroo Island to bring Southern Ocean Lodge back. And there's a real recognition there and an acknowledgement that it's an icon for tourism um, in that state and certainly for Australia and such incredible sort of support uh, across whole of government and whole of community to, to bring that property back, which, you know, is really heartening. And the other is looking at the 
um, tourism industry in South Australia and so many industry partners have contacted us and we didn't realize what's a flow on effect we had with that property that so many people came to South Australia because they were coming because of Southern Ocean Lodge and then they were adding on you know other trips to the Barossa or the Clare or up to the Flinders Ranges so that's been a really interesting story about that um, camaraderie and mateship, which are you know great traits of Australians in in terms of working together and you know how we do actually all work together and, and feed off each other. Um, locally on Kangaroo Island, what's been really heartening in the last um, couple of or last month or so is seeing the wildlife back coming back and also the vegetation and seeing all the various local initiatives in terms of you know, assist from the, um, the wildlife assistants and the people working on the vegetation programs and, and everyone just all in it together. And I think, um, you know, when we come out of this, you know, this awful period, there's, you know, we're going to be on the cusp of so much renewal on Kangaroo Island, which, um, you know, will be so exciting for the future. There's not a, not a day goes past without a, a social media post about Kangaroo Island or Southern Ocean Lodge or, or exceptional Kangaroo Island with Craig and, and what the work they're doing. And it's, well, I've got to take my hat off to the South Australian Tourist Commission because they've done a great job in keeping the promotion going and keeping it alive. But to your point, James, you know, when we used to, before you had Southern Ocean Lodge there, we were selling Kangaroo Island to be a one night stay. And then as soon as Southern became what it was, uh, we started doing three night stays. But then everyone else in Kangaroo Island benefited from you being there, from the beekeepers to the winemakers to the, the, the grocery stores. Everyone benefited and you, you created your own little ecosystem in there, uh, but all ra framed around Southern Ocean Lodge. So I take my hat off to you for that. And that's um, it came evident. On that, it, came, it came off evident that last day of that party we had for 10 years when you invited the locals along and to hear the stories that they were telling me of how important Southern Ocean Lodge is to them. So we need to get people back there once you get it built again and support the economy and get Kangaroo Island back to what it was. But in the meantime, more recently, and you've mentioned it before, Silky Oaks Lodge, and we, we of course met there. It's the first time you and I met at Silky Oaks Lodge many, many years ago. Um, Bailey Lodge has just recently purchased that or acquired it to their portfolio. And I know that you had plans to close it to do some renovations, which now it is closed, so the renovation is still happening. Yes, well, and look, Silky's an interesting story because if I cast my mind back, I mean, even before that time when, when we met, or maybe it even was when we met, which was I was at Silky as actually the general manager when P&O first bought it in um, 90, you know, 92, and I was there 92, 93, 94. So it's interesting uh, going back to that property and seeing so many of the things that you actually had touched in those or part of in those in those years. So it's a real privilege now to be um, leading the design and with um, Hayley, my wife, and we're the, the founders of Bailey Lodges, but also sort of co-creative directors, where a long way through uh, a full reimagining of um, Silky Oaks and it will emerge after this upcoming um, program and we were already got, always going to close um, in fact we were closing in a couple of days time so we only, only end up closing a, a couple of weeks early in the end so we've got a six uh, six month uh, program ahead of us um, around uh, 15 million US dollars going into the property um, and there's no area of it that isn't touched and we're really taking um, this what is a very very special uh, rainforest lodge uh, perched above um, you know those crystal clear uh, waters of the Mossman River Gorge and bringing it up to a Bailey Lodges standard and really making it a, a fully fledged sort of member of Luxury Lodges of Australia. It is uh, such an incredible location and we want it to be a, a, a real sort of mark, a real icon within within uh, tropical North Queensland. So. The designs really honour uh, Australian architecture, the tropics, um, and all of those hallmarks that we have uh, across our group, across Faded Lodges, which is first and foremost is an incredible location. Then, of course, uh, great contemporary design and with a real Australian focus where we're using Australian artisans and designers. Um, locally sourced food and beverage. Uh, this is incredible um, food produce up there. And then, of course, an, an experiences program that 
allows people to immerse in that um, incredible local environment. And for us, it's all about what we call relaxed luxury. And one of our hallmarks is first name service. And it's where when people arrive, they should feel like they're coming home and they're staying with friends and family. And so, yeah, that's really what it's all about. So we're excited about that. The builders have arrived on site. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some uh, interesting times with the flow on effects from the world we're in at the moment, but we'll, um, we'll soldier through and we'll make it happen and it'll be all uh, shiny and new when we come out of this and people are traveling again. What I like to call it is uh, when you move to take over another property is Baileyizing at the property, which is, you know, saying it, enhancing it to become what it is, but you, you and Haley have just got a tremendous, a knack for working out what is needed at each place and what makes this place more special and and how to how to enact the local um, nature and culture around you into the lodge itself and the same as you when you redid um, longitude 131 out in Uluru when you created a southern ocean lodge and when you redid um, Capella Lodge on Lord Howe Island but speaking of baileyizing I've heard that uh, there's another one coming into the mole very shortly uh, and that's going to be the famed Hooker Lodge in Taupo, New Zealand, which is one of my favourite lodges in New Zealand. And Linda and I have been there many, many times and had great experiences. So can you share a little bit about what the plans are for uh, Hooker Lodge once you acquire it? Sure, sure. Uh, look, we feel very honoured to be having Hooker Lodge join the Bailey Lodges family. And I think with um, what's very different uh, when you look at um, when you acquire different properties is you need to sort of look at, okay, where do they sit in the market and what's their history? What's their legacy? What's their soul? And with Hooker, where we're very much honoring the fact that it's the grandfather of luxury lodges and New Zealand was the birthplace of luxury lodges and, and Hooker was really, you know, the, as I just said, the grandfather of those. And so we very much respect that. And, um, I think uh, we need to look at all those special attributes that we have in, in our own Bailey Lodges. And when we look at uh, Baileyfying Hooker, we need to be very careful in terms of what we touch and what we don't touch um, because we have great respect for what has made Hooker so special over the years. I think there's a number of areas that we can, um, you know, we can work on, first of all. I mean, I think the world has moved on a little in terms of uh, style of service and and I think our relaxed luxury uh, is, more, um, is more within keeping of the times. And I think that's something that we will flow through in our sort of first name service style. But I think what we're most excited about is what we can do with um, the main lodge itself at Hooker. Um, and that is at each of our properties, we like to call it sort of the great room or the great space. And it usually is on this incredible part of the property. Hooker has this, this great lodge, but it's a little, it's quite historic and um, in, in that way, because it comes from the past, uh, it's special, but it's a little bit small. Um, and it's got this incredible view that's un, underutilized. And so we're planning to work with some uh, great New Zealand designers um, and open up that space and really make the most of that incredible river, the, the emerald green water is just cascading past and really bring that water into the lodge, but giving it more space so people can spend more time at the lodge and really feel like they're sort of immersed in this experience. And you touched on it before with um, Southern Ocean Lodge and we often call it about creating an experience within an experience and or a destination within a destination. So people should feel that they can easily while away a day or two of leisure time at Hooker, not necessarily always out and about doing activities. They might just want to call up in front of an incredible fire with a glass of red, you know, overlooking these um, amazing waters or be out in summer on the terrace having a long lunch. So that will change the dynamics of Hooker. And I think that will give it, um, a new lease of life moving forward in the future whilst really honouring its uh, its pedigree and its past. Well, you're right about calling it the grandfather of luxury lodges because it really was and it was the only luxury uh, lodge that was there for a long time. Uh, the first time I went there and, and I stood out on the balcony and just looked at that river, uh, it just, and there was a couple of fly fishing rods down on the bank and it just beckons you to come down and pick up a rod and cast a rod into the water there. And it's just, it's amazing. And um, I remember vividly 
coming in by helicopter. We landed at the front lawn there and just getting out of there and then walking up to the, up to the main lodge and getting a glass of champagne. It's just magical. So it's just, um, it's going to be great to have you that down there and enter New Zealand and hopefully many more lodges to come in New Zealand as well as you expand the profile. But um, we recently had Haley up here in, in our house and in, in, in Philadelphia suburbs and Linda interviewed Haley. So um, this makes it now equal that I've interviewed you. So it's really a great opportunity. And I really thank you uh, for allowing us the time today and, and um, in the morning down there in Australia, get back to the surf with the boys and have a good time. And uh, we'll look Thanks, forward sir. to it. And I'll look, look, and I'll look. My lights went out. Look, <laughs> terrible. What's happened? I think I must have, I must have stopped breathing here. Hold on, hold on. There we go. Oh. <laughs> I'm here somewhere, I promise. <laughs> no, I can on, see you. <laughs> Coming back. There we go. Yeah, we, did, we obviously right. didn't pay the power bill. I know, you've got you to <laughs> pay the power bill. Even, even in the times like this, you have to pay power bills, James. Exactly. But no, I appreciate yeah, well, thanks, the time. Uh, thanks for the uh, opportunity and uh, great to talk and uh, looking forward for, to uh, hosting uh, all those incredible guests that uh, Swain will uh, send us uh, in, you know, in the coming uh, years ahead. So thanks so much, everyone. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing uh, the new Silky and then certainly seeing the new Hooker Lodge and, uh, and seeing you and Haley together again and um, we'll catch up. Thanks a lot, mate. Likewise. Bye. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Bye.